Hello there, and thanks for watching the next video of uh, the video training series. In this video, we're going to talk about uh, policies and rules, I mean, how we can basically create policies and uh, uh, allow or block specific uh, requests on, on the firewall. Um, there are a number of things that we will be talking about uh, in terms of uh, creating policies in different different types and uh, orders, and how we can use the security profiles, and uh, what are the best practices uh, in terms of creating policies. Um, just quickly review the design that we have. Uh, so we have a Windows 2012 uh, server here, which will be used for authentication. We have a client on the same subnet as well, which is a Windows XP. Uh, we have our follow the firewalls with three interfaces and, and a PC which will be used as a router. So we will have internet access through the PC and on follow the firewall we will start creating policies and limit access to the internet for these resources that we have here. So let's get started. Just log into our uh, firewall using a password. So before we start uh, defining policies and creating policies, one thing that you need to make sure, uh, if you do have licenses, you need to make sure that uh, your uh, um, URL filtering is up to date, so you can uh, basically download the URL filtering. Uh, to be able to download the URL filtering signatures and database, uh, you need to make sure that you have appropriate, uh, you are using appropriate interface to do so. Because if you remember by default, I said uh, all of the traffic will be sent to the management interface. So we go to uh, setup services and service route configuration. And as you can see, that I have changed uh, a lot of updates here uh, to use 192.168. One thirty-seven dot ten, which is the interface which is located on outside interface. So we need the outside interface to be able to go out and download the updates from our uh, network. I've also set up uh, NTP, the same thing, because uh, to be able to use uh, to be able to use an, an update the downloads, uh, your clock must be updated, and it's important basically to use the same the, the right. Uh, clock and time uh, configuration to download the updates. And uh, uh, as you can see, I've got the uh, DNS server configuration and I'm using a free NTP server to uh, get the uh, timing from. So, a couple of things you need to make sure just update the service route configuration to make sure that you're using the right interface to download the updates and make sure you download the latest updates uh, from that auto uh, as well. So let's get started. So if you remember, we already created a basic uh, policy to allow everything so we can test uh, basic functionality. So let's just make sure that we still have these uh, uh, access on our uh, so we just log in again. Try to browse internet. And sure enough, we do have access to the internet. Um, Going back to our policies, you can see that we are allowing everything. We are using a uh, URL filtering default URL filtering profile. So one of the things that uh, we're going to test and see is uh, basically how the profiles work and uh, how we can uh, basically uh, uh, test the profiles. So if we look at the rule that we created. And go to the actions tab. You can see that there are different profiles we have been using the URL default URL filtering. And uh, uh, going to enter wires, 
chose the default kinds of wires and default um, protections and things like that. So I just chose a couple of those. I'm just going to show you how, how this works. Click on OK. Change. So remember, um, uh, these profiles and things like that will work only if uh, uh, you have a valid license and, and update the uh, um, basically uh, packages and stuff databases from, from the website, otherwise it's not going to work. So we just uh, give it a try. I'm just going to open a new browser. Google. So if we try to connect to uh, websites that they are supposed to be blocked, you can see that website blocked, um, categories at all. If we try to download uh, the virus, for example, just to do a test, um, there is an ACAR test virus by you could uh, uh, try just uh, click on that. Obviously, it's good. The uh, browser is going to come up with the uh, font itself, which is fine. Again, we go to test by. So we are going to do the test. Just try to uh, apply and come up and say that there is virus and it can block us. So that's that's how the uh, profiles are working. Again, if you want uh, to uh, change different settings, for example, I want to uh, let my Windows XP machine to have access and not my server. By default, all of the uh, IP addresses they do have access. So uh, my Windows XP machine is uh, 192.168.1.5 and my server is 1.2, as uh, you can see on the uh, diagram here. Uh, 192.168.1.5. So once we do this, as you can see that now. I only have access from these to outside, um, and the next rule is this one, which is uh, going to deny everything. So we just commit the change. to try see if we got internet access. And we don't have internet access. And the reason that we don't have internet access is probably because we're using 192.168.1.2 as DNS server and it can be resolved because we don't have internet access on that server. So we're going to go back to here, just add another rule, just call it DNS source address or source one is inside. Um, IP address is one nine two one six eight. It's going to be outside any and our service is going to be DNS. This is a service that I created before, but uh, I could create a DNS service basically by uh, 
this is UDP port 53 uh, actions hello okay so I'm gonna move this to the top as well commit the change and once it's committed uh, logically we should have uh, DNS access on our server and the client is using a uh, server in a server of the server uh, to get it so, so just give it another try and sure enough you can see it's now working and if we go back to our server it's just browse you can see that internet is not working on this machine so we should have uh, ability to resolve the names as you can see because we created a role for DNS and uh, permitted DNS access from this server but uh, actual internet access is not working in this machine so we got this we got a um, we are basically blocking our uh, server from accessing internet we are allowing our client to access internet uh, on specific urls and we have our virus profiles and things like that so if you want to go more than that you could just uh, say on the client, I only want to have access on HTTP and HTTPS. So that essentially means that FTP and other things like SMTP and others is not going to work on, on the client. Um, so I'm just going to, before I commit, I'm just uh, going to do a quick test to the client. And, uh, search to find out an FTP server um, and you can see uh, this is still HTTP so I'm just, I'm just going to try to see if FTP is enabled on this link so you can see FTP is enabled but not to log into the FTP, but FTP is enabled. We're just going to go back, commit the change that we've done. Once it's applied, we should have only HTTP and HTTP access, HTTPS access uh, on this rule, not not uh, FTP. So we're just going to give it another try. Let's uh, try. is working and let's try out FTP again and you can say FTP doesn't work anymore which means it's been blocked from the farm. So um, the other things that you could do with the, with the policies as I said uh, you can specify the zones, you can specify the IP addresses, you could even specify the user if you want to. So you could uh, just uh, find a user on Active Directory and just allow that user to access or, or create some specific rules for that user if you want to. Um, destination again, destination address and so on. Uh, you could specify specify specific application and things like that uh, to uh, basically be allowed or be blocked, whatever, you could just uh, be pocket for example, you could just block it if you want to. Services in your categories again, and, and all these profile configuration that you have here. You could do the logging, you could, uh, if you have a syslog profile, you could send the logs to a central syslog server, and things like that. So so you have a lot of flexibilities with the, with the profiles, 
and with the uh, security profiles. Um, to basically uh, narrow down what uh, is required. So the best practices always is uh, to just narrow down or minimum privileges to uh, give your users and your computers and the network to have access to only what they need so that implicit deny at the end is, is obviously important because it's denying everything uh, so that is uh, called a negative uh, security model so you are denying everything and allowing only what you need which is, which is the right thing to do and you always better to make sure that, that the rules bit more heat you put them on the top because it's going to be less slow for the, for the firewall. So, for example, there will be a lot of DNS requests and there will be a lot of HTTP requests. So, you probably better to move them on the top uh, rather than having them at the bottom of the list. If the list is too long, it's going to have some impact on the firewall. And um, we also have a positive security model which you can do the other way around, allow everything. So, you have to override these and uh, basically deny. What you need. It's always recommended to use the, the negative security model, so it's better to just narrow down uh, the uh, uh, privileges and, and access to uh, only what is required and block everything else. Um, I guess we've pretty much covered everything on, on the policy, so you could just uh, play around with the policies, create rules. Uh, you know, trying to uh, provide um, access or limit access for, for specific users or specific IP addresses and understand how they work. Um, I hope uh, you've enjoyed this video and I will be with you next video.